in this lecture we're going to study and discuss the structure of an atom now uh, an atom is considered to be the basic uh, building block of all the compounds substances etc on this planet but an atom is not an indivisible part it is composed of it can be divided further and it's composed of three specific particles and one of those particles is the three particles one is called a proton then you have a neutron and then there are electrons so the three particles that make up uh, an atom a proton a neutron and an electron now let's talk about the charges a proton is a particle that has a positive charge on it on the other hand a neutron has no charge on it it is completely neutral it has no charge on it and an electron has a negative charge on it similarly we'll talk about the masses the relative So let's talk about the relative masses. Uh, we talk about relative masses. Uh, what that term means is that we're comparing the masses of proton, neutrons, and electrons with each other. We're not talking about the absolute mass. The actual mass of a proton or a neutron or an electron is very, very small. You can Google it and you can find that out. Uh, but when you talk about the relative mass masses, if I say that a proton has a mass of 1, then a neutron would have an equal mass. So protons and neutrons have relative masses which are exactly the same. Whereas an electron is 1 over 1840. It's 1840 times lighter than uh, both protons and neutrons. So so basically what we've, uh, uh, di we've discussed or learned so far is that a proton has a positive charge, an electron has a negative charge, a neutron is neutral. These two have exactly the same masses, uh, they're e in equal proportion. Whereas an electron is extremely light, it's 1840 times lighter than both proton and neutron. Uh, now we know, uh, know something about the properties of proton, neutrons and electrons. Uh, let's say I'm doing an experiment in which I have uh, two plates now one of the plates has positive charge on it whereas the other plate has negative charge on it and there's a beam of particles which consists it's consisting of uh, so there's a there's a beam of particle heading in this direction and it has protons it has neutrons and it has electrons in it now as it as this beam passes through in between the, these two plates uh, the protons are going to get attracted because the protons are positively charged they're going to get attracted to the negative plate so they would deflect to this side this is where protons would eventually end up they're going to get attracted to the negative plate the neutrons since they have no charge they're not going to get attracted to either plate so they're going to keep on traveling straight Remember this, that unlike charges attract each other. Positive is going to attract negative when uh, like charges repel each other. So that means positive repels positive and negative repels negative. Now you have, uh, we are left with electrons. Now remember electrons are extremely uh, light. They are 1840 times lighter than both protons and neutrons. So now electrons are negatively charged. They are going to get attracted to the positive plate. But they are going to get deflect deflected more compared to protons and the reason is because they are lighter it's easier to deflect a light object so electrons have a larger deflection compared to protons because of the difference in masses one other thing that we need to know about proton neutrons and electrons is how do we figure out the proton number the electron number number of neutrons etc in an atom uh, you have the if you have the periodic table with you the periodic table has two numbers for example if i'm writing sodium if you look at sodium in the periodic table there would be two number one would be the smaller number and one would be the 
bigger number. Generally, the larger number is written on top and the smaller number is written at the bottom. There are different ways of writing this. So there would be two numbers. And this number on top, this is called the atomic mass. There's another name given to this number. It's called the nucleon number. Then there's this number at the bottom that's called the it's called the atomic number and there's another name given to this it's called the proton number. Now the atomic now the first, let's uh, talk about the atomic number slash proton number this number would tell you the number of proton it tells you about the it tells you the number of protons as is evident from its name so it gives you an idea of the number of protons for example sodium has 11 protons then you have the atomic mass or the nuclear number atomic mass of the nuclear number it gives you the sum of protons plus neutrons so these two numbers represent this the top number gives you the sum of protons plus neutrons and the bottom number or the smaller number gives you the number of protons so if you have the number of protons then you have the number of protons plus neutrons to figure out the number of neutrons if you if I want to know the number of neutrons then I can if I want to know the number of neutron I'll subtract the atomic mass by the atomic number if I subtract the atomic mass by the atomic number what's left behind is the number of neutrons so if you want to figure out the number of neutrons just sub subtract 23 minus 11 if you subtract 23 minus 11 you'll get 12 which is the number of neutrons in this case uh, another thing to remember is for a neutral atom So if you have a neutral atom, a neutral atom means that it has no charge, no overall charge. So a neutral atom will not have an overall charge. So since it has no overall charge, that means what were the charged particles? You had proton, neutrons have no charge. You had protons and electrons that were charged. Protons have positive charge whereas electrons have negative charge these were the two charged substances in an atom if the atom is neutral that would mean that the number of protons the positive charge and the negative charge is equal so if something has no overall charge that means the number of protons equals the number of electrons so for a neutral atom your proton number or atomic number proton number or atomic number is equal to the number of electrons Now we're going to do a few examples to discuss uh, the number of protons, electrons and neutrons. How do we figure that out? So uh, the first example is of lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of 3, which is also equal to the proton number. So the number of protons is 3. Lithium has an atomic mass of 7. 
that means the number of neutrons is atomic mass minus the proton number which in this case comes out to be 7 minus 3 is equal to 4 neutron and since it's a neutral atom that means the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal uh, the reason is that the positive and negative charges are equal they cancel out which is why it's a neutral atom moving on to magnesium it has an atomic number or proton number of 12 so the number of protons is 12 and the number of electrons is also 12 because it's a neutral atom and the charges are supposed to cancel out so they only cancel out when the number of protons and electrons are equal the number of neutrons can be found out by subtracting the atomic mass which gives you the proton plus neutron by the atomic number which only gives you the protons so if you subtract 24 minus 12 you get 12 neutrons similarly for chlorine chlorine if you look at the periodic table it's 17 and 35 17 is the proton number so the number of protons is 17 the number of electrons is also equal to 17 because it's neutral whereas the number of neutrons is 35 minus 17 which comes out to be 18 now this certain atoms which are not neutral they are charged those are called ions ions are atoms they can also be molecules but we're going to discuss the mo um, molecular ions later on so the certain atoms which have net charges on them so they're atoms molecules that have net charge due to a loss or gain of electrons when we study the atomic structure I will tell you that uh, the only thing that an atom can lose or gain is the number of electrons so atoms have a tendency to lose or gain electrons so they get an overall charge uh, the reason why they have a net charge is remember if there are more protons compared to electrons protons have an overall positive charge and electrons have a negative charge so if there's more positive charge the overall charge is going to be the net charge is going to be it's going to be positive because there's going to be more positive charge vice versa if there are more electrons compared to protons then the net charge is going to be negative if you have as an example if you have 10 protons and we have 9 electrons now 10 protons will have a charge of plus 10 9 electrons will have a total charge of minus 9 because one electron is a charge of minus 1 the overall charge on this atom if we add the charges up is going to be plus one that's how you figure out the net charge on on an ion similarly we might have an atom in which you have eight protons and you have ten electrons the overall charge on eight protons is going to be plus eight and the overall charge on ten electrons is going to be minus ten and if I add the charges up it's eight minus ten the net charge would be minus two a positive ion is called a cation that's another name used but it's used for a positive ion but if the net charge is negative, that is a negative ion, that would be called an anion. Now when writing an ion, the net charge would be represented on the top right corner of the element. For example, I've written down sodium and it has a charge of plus one. Plus one means that it has, it has lost lost an electron that that is the meaning of plus charge it means it has lost an electron so if we if we look at the number of protons for a neutral atom they were how many protons they were 11 protons and for a neutral atom the number of electrons should be the same as well so they were 11 electrons 
and 23 minus 11 gives you the number of neutrons they were 12 neutrons now for a neutral atom the number of protons and number of electrons were equal but since it has a charge of plus one plus one indicates that it has lost one electron so the number of electrons now are 10 so you have 10 electrons left 11 protons will have a charge of plus 11 10 electrons will have a charge of minus 10 and if I sum this up this comes out to be plus 1 which is the net charge on this particular sodium ion similarly let's look at chlorine chlorine is uh, Cl is 17 and 35 and it has a charge of let's say minus 1 so we have a chlorine ion it's called a chloride ion so we have chlorine now for a neutral minus one means that it has one extra electron that is the meaning of negative charge and minus one means it has one extra electrons for a neutral atom the number of protons is 17 so you have 17 protons and for a neutral atom the protons and electrons are equal so you would have 17 electrons and for a neutral atom uh, the neutral number would be 35 minus 17 which comes out to be 18 so you would have 18 neutrons now uh, moving on since uh, it has a charge of minus one that means it has one extra electron so there would be one extra electron and that would make the total number of electrons equal to 18. So this ion would have 18 electrons instead of the 17 electrons. So there wouldn't be 17 electrons in this, there would be 18 electrons. That's how you figure out the number of electrons, protons and neutrons in ions. Now we're going to discuss the structure of an atom. We've already discussed the properties of uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and uh, they basically make up what an atom is. And we're going to discuss how those protons, neutrons, and electrons are arranged in uh, an atom. So, uh, an atom uh, has a very tiny center. It's called it's called the nucleus. An atom is based is mostly empty spaces. So there's a tiny nucleus and that nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. So protons and neutrons occupy that nucleus. And then you have regions around the nucleus. These, you have these regions around the nucleus. Let me draw another region over here. then let's draw a third one okay now I've drawn three regions this these regions are called shells and these shells are where electrons would reside so there's a center nucleus a tiny region in the center where protons and neutrons are uh, uh, basically occupy that uh, nucleus and you have shells around the, the around the nucleus where electrons would exist now proton has a positive charge neutron has no charge so the nucleus is has a has an overall charge which is positive whereas electrons we already know they have they have negative charge so we have a positive center and negative electrons roaming around that positive center and these electrons the reason why they, the reason why they stick around that nucleus is because negatively charged electrons get attracted to the positively charged uh, nucleus another thing is that this is a very simplified version uh, this is called the uh, Rohr uh, Bohr Rutherford model So it's a Bohr-Rutherford 
model. It's a it's a simplified version of how an atom looks like. If you go into higher classes, this model would keep on uh, changing and it will become more sophisticated. But this is this is the simplest version of what an atom would look like. Now um, another thing we need to know we need to figure out is that uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, these regions are called shell. The first shell, the, this is the first shell, the one that is closest to the nucleus, it's called the K shell. Then there's a second shell which is slightly further away from the nucleus, it's called the L shell. Then you have the M shell and so on. I mean these keep on continuing, it depends on how many electrons exist in an atom. Uh, for example, in iron, there are lots of electrons. In uh, hydrogen, there's only one electron. So hydrogen would just have uh, a f uh, one shell com occupied. It just has one electron. So you have K shells, L shells, and M shells, and K point alpha they're, they're alphabetically arranged. As you move away from the nucleus, the, you'll have N shells and O shells, etc. Now, another thing about these shells is that if an electron has is very energetic, then that electron would overcome the force of attraction from this positive nucleus and it would be able to stay as far away from the nucleus as possible. So the further you're from the nucleus, the more energy the electron is going to have. The closer you're from to the nucleus, that means it doesn't have a lot of, for example, if an electron is over here, then that means it doesn't have a lot of energy to overcome the force of attraction from the nucleus. So as you move, away from the nucleus the energy levels of the electrons residing in the shells increases so you're going to find more energetic electrons further away from the nucleus now another thing is how many electrons would a particular shell occupy let's look at the k shell first Now, if you look at the K-shell, the K-shell is the closest to the nucleus. That means the electrons with the lowest energy occupy the K-shell. And it also is the smallest of the shells. So it's a, it's a very tiny shell. That means it won't occupy a lot of electrons. So only two electrons can be accommodated in the K-shell. If you move away from the nucleus, you have the L-shell. The electrons occupying the L-shell will have a slightly higher energy because it's further away from the nucleus. And uh, if you compare the L-shell and K-shell, L-shell looks a bit bigger. So more electrons can occupy the L-shell, a total of eight electrons. This is the maximum number of electrons that it can occupy. It can occupy less than this, but it, this is the maximum number of electrons then that this shell can occupy. Then you have the M shell, which is even bigger than the L shell, and it occupies the 18 electrons which can be present in the M shell. Now, a simple formula exists to find the number of electrons in the shell. Instead of remembering this, So a simple formula exists to find the number of electrons in a shell and that formula is 2n squared where n where n basically represents the number of shell or the shell number. So the, if it's the first shell then n would be 1. 1 would mean 1 square would be 1 and 1 into 2 would be 2. So K shell would have 2 electrons. If it's the second shell, which is the L shell, then 2 square is 4. 4 into 2 is 8. So it, it occupies, uh, there would be 8 electrons maximum occupying that shell. The M shell is the third shell. So 3 square is 9. 9 into 2 is 18 electrons. So you can, you can figure out the number of electrons in a shell by using this formula. Now remember this, that electrons occupy the lowest energy. Let's write that down. The rule for uh, filling electrons or how electrons occupy shells is that electrons always 
occupy the lowest energy shelf first so that's our first rule for filling electrons in a shell now I've told you that shell the first shell our first shell which was shell K had a maximum of two electrons that was the lowest energy then we had shell L and add, that had a maximum of 8 electrons and its energy level was higher than the previous shell. Then you had shell M, it had a maximum of 18 electrons and if you keep on moving after shell M, we'll have shell N and that would have a maximum of 32 electrons if you, if you uh, apply the formula to N square. Shell n is the fourth shell, so four square is 16, 16 into 2 is 32. So your energy level, your energy of electrons in these shells, it increases.